For Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is an activist, Barbara Masigela, to discuss her book titled Poli Poli. Tell us about uh, growing up in Guacuta with your grandmother. Most children uh, at that time lived with their grandmothers mm -hmm. because their parents were working on the reef. Mm -hmm. Wheat Bank is a small mining town. They call it Emalatleni now. And most of the people who come in my time were people who came to work in the mines. You had few men in the black location because most of the men went to, to, to work. You had a lot of old women, widowers and children you know, who tried to make a living. Most of them worked as washerwomen, you know, domestic servants yes. uh, in the white town. But they, they worked for poor whites. Mm. And I have an incident in the, in the book where my mother comes from Joburg mm. and she takes us to town. I don't know what we were going to buy. Mm. And of course, we're wearing all the new clothes that she has brought from Johannesburg. And this white child sitting in the back of the buggy says to the mother, Mother, look, look at the cake uh, the, the plain Boba, Boba Yankees at Neva Clara on. You know, so I mean, though th those things are real, they happened. You know, uh, just like uh, when we were school children, for instance, when we went to Pretoria to the zoo mm. on the school outing, we were not allowed to walk on the pavement. Mm. We were we would walk in the street, and there were many towns yeah. in South Africa like that. Yeah. And I mean, it was very true that. At a certain hour, you know, you, there was no evidence of black life in those areas where white people lived and where you had such, uh, such strict segregation mm. and, and where black people were. We grew up under those circumstances. Mm. So we look at your generation, you know, talking about apartheid, but we, we, we often do not have a view of how we came to survive to be here mm -hmm. because we, we are here because it is that generation of people of my grandmother's generation mm -hmm. who were the ones who had to make sure that we survived. Yeah. Uh, so they were not conservative, they were not afraid, they, but they were so overwhelmed by the power of the conqueror that to us they may seem to have been very conservative, mm. you know, and not fought enough for their freedom. But the very fact of our survival as a people is due to them. True, true. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was interesting to see that the book is also dedicated to your brother who was mm -hmm. not at times. My brother was a male child mm -hmm. and male children compared to female children had more freedom, yes. you know, to, to move around. So they went to the farms to steal fruits, you know, they wandered all over the place. Mm -hmm. They went to the football stadium and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, he was, he was a naughty boy, like all the other the boys that he hung out um, uh, uh, with. Yeah. Mm. It was interesting when you spoke about your grandmother now having to leave working for the whites, but choosing to sell alcohol. But your grandmother was clever because mm -hmm. she didn't keep it in, in the house. You know, there where we buried the, the alcohol, mm. it was at the end of the location. Yeah. And there were many holes there where women oh. buried, mm -hmm. you know, their liquor. Mm. Because they did that so that when the police came, there was nothing in the house. Mm. It was all, it was all there. Mm. And everybody had their own little hole. In those days, people who lived in the native locations, as they were called, mm -hmm. they knew each other. 
you know, yeah. uh, uh, because they most likely arrived there at the same time, you know, chased away from some farm or the other. Mm. And there was a great deal of respect mm. for people who had an education because they were the ones who would interpret the official documents, letters, mm. etc., for those people mm -hmm. who were uneducated. Mm -hmm. And usually people migrated in families, you know. My grandmother had her sister mm -hmm. and her brother living there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, we grew, I grew up with my cousins and all of that, you know. Mm -hmm. You had those, those family units uh, that were quite large. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the book, when you address the issue of apartheid, uh, you, you tell us about that incident that you mentioned earlier about mm. uh, the white boy referring to you and your brother as mm. monkeys. Actually, how did that make you feel? Well, we were small children. I must have been about six or so. Mm. Even. I think most of the time you felt scared. Okay. Uh, but also we were greatly protected. Mm. Because if you were a child, you never saw... You know, you never saw white people. Yeah. You didn't go to town. You grew up in a close community situation. Mm -hmm. It was only when you get, get, got older yeah. that you encountered the, the, the white world. Mm -hmm. Or if you were sent to town to, to take the laundry mm -hmm. or things like that. Yeah. But uh, normally you lived in the small circle of mm. people, you know, who you knew very well, you know, who who went to the same churches and so on, you know, where people would go, come, come home in the evening to tell your grandmother that they saw you doing such and such, you know, and you were punished. So <laughs> they, they used to encourage us. Education was a major thing, you know, and our grandmothers, my grandmother knew how to read the Bible and everything, but if there was a telegram or something, she would say, open it and read it, partly because she was terrified, oh, she because a, 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 a telegram always meant that somebody had died mm. because it was, it was delivered by the policeman from the police station because that's where mm. the telegram came. But my parents, being more modern and younger, sometimes they would send a telegram to say they will be coming to visit. And my grandmother would get so angry to say, why do they do that? I nearly died, you know, just to tell me that they are coming, you know. So there was that. So if there was a telegram, she'd just say, Babsy, leave it, you know, read it. And you also tell us in the book about your mother's um passion for politics and your dad was... <laughs> I think that my mother's passion for politics was at the time people in the townships were really militantly against apartheid mm. because you must remember that the, the, the elections took place in 1948 where the Nationalist Party won mm. and that signaled a turn for the whole country. And for instance, Alexandra Township was a very militant community. Mm. And you, you know, I talk about the bus boycott mm. uh, in, in Alexandra Township as well. And it was not the first bus boycott against Patcom. Mm. And the defiance campaign, which was uh, initiated uh, by the ANC was taking place all over the country. So uh, people were recognizing that apartheid was much, much more vicious than the color bar that they had known, which they had called the Ikalabai. Yeah. You know, that had been in place. It's not as though apartheid was... Uh, Apartheid was just made official mm. by being given a name and new legislation, mm -hmm. you know, being made which, which, which strengthened the, 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 the segregationist, yeah. you know, uh, laws. My mother was militant 
like many other women yeah. and men in all the townships, mm -hmm. people were up in arms against the past laws. Mm -hmm. So it was just natural for my mother as a social worker who worked with the poorest of the poor mm -hmm. to want to be part of, mm -hmm. of, of the defiance campaign. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, you know, given the patriarchal society that we live in, you know, yeah. uh, that was deemed as by some families. I'm sure there were many, many more women who, who were like my mother, mm -hmm. who were not allowed yeah. to participate mm -hmm. in the active, you know, mm. struggle. Yeah. I remember a family meeting was called for her mm. uh, by your father's yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And can you also briefly just tell us for the benefit of our viewers how then you were also introduced into politics? Oh, I think that again, you know, I, you know, I think that's why I wrote my story the mm. way I write because I think that I tried to reflect on what was happening to my whole generations. Mm. And one of the most satisfying things I've had was people saying, oh, I recognize this. Oh, this mm. happened to us. Exactly. Oh, this happened to us also. Because um, my own political uh, uh, awakening was also at home because we had newspapers. We read, new, my, my parents bought the Bantu World, they bought the Golden City Post, they bought newspapers, yeah. and they bought the Daily Mail, mm -hmm. the Rand Daily Mail. And so I had an opportunity to read, but I would also listen to my parents mm -hmm. who were community workers speaking about the effects mm -hmm of apartheid laws on their clients, mm -hmm. you know, because people were, for instance, there was the influx control law, which, which told people that they could not live in the city, they had to go back to the rural areas. And it was usually the black civil servants mm -hmm. who became the messengers of apartheid because they were the ones who had to tell these people, no, no, go to this office, try this, go and see this commissioner. Mm -hmm. And in the end, they would say, well, you've now exhausted all the avenues, mm -hmm. you know, so you have to go. Um, and of course, we witnessed this as, 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 as children, mm -hmm. and all South African children experienced yes. it, mm -hmm. you know. So even up to the time when we got freedom in South Africa. Mm. I would say that if you look at the uprisings, the school up, they took place all over. Mm. You know, it was not one area yeah. because resistance had always been a part mm. of our black society that people resisted yeah. domination. Mm. Wherever you were, mm -hmm. you knew what was you could not say that mm. you didn't know that there was oppression okay. and that even the daily conversation over the fence of people in the townships was about so-and-so was arrested mm. for passes, mm. so-and-so, uh, you know, I mean, yeah. so it was a, a part of an integral part mm. of our upbringing. But further still, I think that going to Inanda Seminary mm -hmm. for me, I was very fortunate because it was a very enlightened school mm. uh, and they went out of, but I think many schools did that. Mm. I think many schools tried to broaden the knowledge and understanding of their students, mm -hmm. you know, except of course, of course, I'm sure there were conservative schools where they, but my school, like they would invite people like Chief Albert Lutuli, yeah. uh, MB Angwa. They, they always made sure that people like who were qualified, you know, like Cecilia Makiwane or Brigalia Bam, were invited to come and speak okay. to us 
about their you know, experience or Africans who had gone overseas, you know, and things like that. They always invited them to the school and we learned that we could become like that, mm. that there was a way in which we could lift ourselves up. Upliftment was a very big thing. And on a lighter note, uh, there, there, there's a, a part in the book where you speak about your surname having been changed <laughs> to Maskell instead of Masigel. Mm. <laughs> Can you share what uh, happened? Uh, on the contrary, mm. I, 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 I don't think it's a lighter note. Mm. I think it's very serious yes, because it shows how apartheid impinged mm. on your personal life, on family life, you know, because the issue was that um, colored children and white children mm. would take four years to do matric, yeah. to get, you know, to, yeah, whereas Africans took five years, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So my clever mother calculated because there was a deadline for people to, for black people to be admitted to the so-called open universities mm. like uh, Vits, mm. you know, Natal and so on. So my mother calculated that if I could finish my trick in 1959, then I would still have an opportunity mm to go to Vits or other, the other open universities. Uh, and the only way I could do that was to go to a colored school. Mm. So I was sent to a colored school with the hope that uh, um, I would finish my metric quickly mm. and, and, and escape mm. Bantu education. But that was not to be you know, as I explain in yeah, the book. Yeah. And that it is under those circumstances mm. that I went to a colored school and I had to change my surname. Mm. And lastly, Mama, what are you hoping the readers will get after they've read your book? I hope that it, it makes people examine our society less in terms of me, 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 and now, 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 you know. I think that it's very important for us to have a profound understanding of the history of our country in its entirety. The history of South Africa is not only the history of political parties, but it is a history of dispossession, dislocation, mm. violence, yeah. that did not start with the Shafville or with, with, but which is the part of the very fabric mm. of our society. So uh, when we look at crime now, when we look at gender-based violence, mm teenage pregnancies, almost anything you can name. Mm. It all originates mm -hmm. from the historical experience of violence that is the major aspect of the South African character. Uh, but of course we know also that resistance mm -hmm. has also been the other side yeah. of the picture strength and resistance and courage and sacrifice mm -hmm. that also, you know. So we need to, to have um, an understanding that we came to be because of the values mm -hmm. that were inculcated yeah. into us by those who came before us. Mm -hmm. We are not the cleverest people, you know. There were earlier generations mm. who also had, you know, their Sol Blikes, mm. their Dubes, you know, their Sikukunis. Mm. Every generation has had champions of freedom. It did not start today. Yeah. 
There was Barbara Masigela in conversation with Polity about her book titled Poli Poli.